After many weeks, we're finally done with our starter base. And now we actually begin playing the game. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we went around the entire world collecting pretty much every hard drive on the map. And now we have an insane amount of alternate recipes to unlock and use in our new main factory. And yes, you heard me right. Main factory. All that we've done in this world was really just to get and unlock hard drives. That was it. We pretty much haven't even started playing the game yet. So on our satisfactory live streams, I went and finished off parts of our starter base here, adding in some cool stuff to the weapons factory, some smokestacks with the rounded walls, and just little touch-ups here and there. Like just little visual things so that this piece isn't super super boring when we look down on it, because our factory is going to be huge! and make this thing look very contemporary. Now then, I've been reading your guys' comments and you guys have been asking me, Kibitz, where are you making this grand main base? Because in our first playthrough, we just made our main base in the bottom of the map, which is actually the worst idea. Would not recommend that. But this time, we're gonna do things in a much smarter way, and we're gonna actually build our main base right here, on top of this river. It's going to be huge. It's going to be, it's going to dwarf this mountain. It's going to dwarf our starter base. It's going to be massive and efficient. Uh, we're right near all of the iron that's in the desert over there. We have tons of oil just on this coast area. And thanks to our travel pipe infrastructure, we should be able to have a belt going all the way into the red forest to collect all of the bauxite down in here for later. And also, a great feature of this area is similar to our starting location in the last playthrough down here. It's very open. Like, we're probably gonna have a giant platform going from like way over here, out to over in this area, and then just go up from there. The big difference this time though, is that we're going to fully plan our base here. So, it's not just gonna be random factories stacked up into like space. We are going to plan out every inch of it. This starting square is but a blueprint to what we will build. It'll kind of end up looking like a bit of a city with like lots of trains underneath, then like warehouses and towers all over the place doing different things. Also with this base, we're kind of going to be doing the globalization method where we have little factories all around like the world and this main base will be where everything comes together and turns into supercomputers and turbo motors and all the spicy jazz. And also this time, we're not gonna spend about 100 hours building walls. Because I got a new mod, guys. The Area Actions mod. So, we just select the milestone. It's free. And then we have to make it in here. So the Area Actions mod can kind of be thought of like Mass Dismantle except for everything else. So, I am kind of new with it, but now hopefully we can master it very quickly. Okay, so right click to open, gotcha. So there's please remove corners, select clear bottom, okay, select all of the map. So our whole world, okay. In mass dismantle, wait, we could select the whole map in mass dismantle it? <laughs> that would be interesting. Set recipes for all the machines in an area. Set station to unload or load. That could be helpful with trains. Copy and paste. <laughs> and uh, fill. Okay. Uh, help? What do? Welcome to Area Actions Mod. This mod makes it easier to build, dismantle big areas, and do repetitive tasks. In the left panel, you can choose the area selection mode. And you make your selections and do an action. But sometimes you want to select only the floor of your factory. For that, you can set the bottom and top of the area you want. Okay, so you kind of like move the corners, and then you set like the bottom of the box and the top of the box. And if you want to select a single building, for example, fill a row of constructors, there's an option to do that too. What's the option? Select O. Click on a building and select it only. Okay, that's the option. And then these are all the other things we can do. I'm pretty sure I get this. Like, we make the box, we can either dismantle it, set the recipes for all of them, etc, etc. Copy, paste, fill. Okay. And if you want to get a better view of the area, you can always enable flying. Okay. That sounds pretty cheaty, but as we're learning stuff today, we'll try it out. Okay. Yep, extremely hyper cheaty. 
Uh, just for this like initial platform though, we're gonna use this. Okay, and honestly, I am extremely happy I did decide to use the flying because, oh my goodness, I am big dumb and mod is really difficult. Well, mainly because I am big dumb. But I've used it to fill in the platform here, and now I can kind of show you how it works. Like, I tried commentating while I was learning this, but it took like literally half an hour, so yeah. I'm just gonna sum it up for you. So, with the area actions mod in your inventory bar, place and remove corners. So you're just going to want to select your little corners of whatever you want. So let's just say this little bit here. And then once you select your four corners, you got a box. But you got to make sure it doesn't go all crisscross applesauce. So you got to flip that bad boy around and do that. There we go. So now it's a proper box. You set the top just by clicking to the top. And everything turns red because we actually just deleted the world. At least that's what I thought at first. But no, that just sets the top, then we do the same with the bottom. Boom. Now we got a tiny little square selected. Easy peasy. And now we got two options with that bad boy. I guess, yeah, we have five options, but you know what I mean. We can dismantle it, copy paste, or fill. And I was trying, I spent so long figuring out what the difference between copy and paste and fill is. So copy paste here brings this whole thing up and we can copy one copy of our selection to wherever we want. So you can see there's like some X, Y, Z coordinates right over here. So we could have this go like, I don't know, it's like five meters in this direction. It could go another six meters in this direction. And then we can have it move up like 10 meters. And with our offset done, we can preview it. And wow, that's where the thing is. It's the thing we just copied and now we're gonna paste it there. So yeah, we can like paste it to location, select a rotation center. Okay, I didn't mess with this, so I don't know what that does. But generally speaking, that's like copy and paste. We don't want to do that though. Instead, we're going to use the fill action. So instead of like copying and pasting once, if we have this fill two times, so it fills here and fills there, boom, there we go, easily done. And just by using that on a massive scale, I was able to make this entire platform. So there's still a lot that I don't understand with this mod, and we'll figure it out in time. Like, I'll probably only ever use it whenever we have to make like hundreds of machines, like 300 smelters for one project. Then I'll probably make like 50 and copy from there. Like we're not gonna be using it all that often. However, oh my gosh, it's gonna help me so much with screenshots. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, anyway though, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's start planning our actual base. And we'll use the flying for planning, right? It's fine. Right? Wink? <laughs> anyway though, our travel pipes are gonna connect from our starter base, go whoop, to the tower, and then whoop, right inside the base. Where we're gonna have another kind of like hub area. So we're gonna bring our concrete, our, what are they? Reinforced iron plates, iron plates, iron rods, common stuff we use all the time to this area. And then kind of build out from there. And then you might be wondering why the heck there's like this hole cut into the platform. And that's just because I want to try and like cut out buildings from this cookie sheet. Like you know when you make cookies and you have the cookie cutter to make the cookie in the dough? That's how it's going to kind of work with this project. For example here, this new travel pipe is coming out to this point and this will be a whole new building. So we will cut it out, like so. And then we kind of cut out the building's foundation from that area. So this is just an example. This is not like what the building is actually going to look like. But just to show you what I mean. And the reason I have this huge cut in here is because I want to make sure that nothing is built directly over the river. Because I want to have a lot of cool bridges going like all over the place too. And preferably we can kind of look down and see an awesome river beneath us. I think that would be pretty nifty. Well, that's like way, way later. I think number one is we just build our building here and get all of the items over. And I had the best idea in the world as well. And that is instead of abandoning the entire starter base here, we can use it as a factory for all of those basic supplies, which is pretty much what it was intended for in the first place. And I guess we can just bring everything from the back of the base underneath right to where we need to go. Cool. But we have to really avoid building bridges under here. Uh, trains are like the big deal for underneath our base. 
So this is probably the only other bridge we're gonna have going over. Oh, but the best thing with the bridges is that we can use these half steel walls. Like this is gonna look amazing. But we're gonna have one there, one there, and then we can have the foundations right above. And we can kind of layer these bridges on top of each other. So there we go, we got a little something like this. And check this out. It's gonna look amazing from the side. Absolutely amazing. And we can just stack this design higher and higher and we're just gonna have them all over the place and mm, it's gonna look so cool once we have a lot of them going. But for now, we'll just use this for our starter items. I think we have about five, so we'll just stack one more layer on this. There we go. And add in the belts. And what did I say, guys? It looks absolutely phenomenal. Now, I may fill in the rest of the walls around the bridge, but you know what? I'm gonna leave it like this for as long as possible. Uh, filling in the walls would reduce a lot of lag, but since it's the early game, we don't have lag problems. Yet. <laughs> so this is all good. And I went ahead and completed our storage room. So, ooh, <laughs> that was close. Uh, so it's like pretty much all of our other storage rooms where we have the auto refilling bins. So we got our, can't click it, weird. Uh, so we have our, just our iron plates, concrete, all the rest of that kind of jazz. Though I put these Mark IV lifts on the front and we might change that around a little bit, but for now it's cool. Then on to the left, we have our bulk storage items. So this is the stuff we just bring over, like quick wire probably, probably some modular frames, motors, and that kind of jazz. And yeah, just a little engineering station and a craft bench, and we're all good. Oh, yes, and our elevator, of course, will be right over here. Can that not be there? You better believe it cannot be there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So with the storage room done, that's like our very most important main build. Now as for the rest of the area, things get a little bit more spicy. Gonna have to think a little bit bigger picture. So, let's check things out. So since our hub's gonna be there, and we want trains underneath, I think the best course of action would be to have kind of a warehouse area. Probably over here, because then it's close to our bulk storage, right? And we can easily run and grab whatever we need. So warehousing all on this side. I'm not sure how we're gonna do that yet. We really have to get the trains before we do that. Uh, then we'll have like basic constructing. So maybe of like quartz crystals and things of that nature. No. You know what we really need? We need a new spine. And I want this base to have one super spine for the whole thing. Okay, so if our warehouses are here, probably we'll want our super spine around here. Yeah, because again, I don't want to build over the water as much as I can. In fact, you know what? Maybe like right in front of our base here. Like right in here. Yeah. And now when I say super spine, I don't just mean like stacking a bunch of conveyor walls all together like we have before. This one's going to be significantly bigger. Because I don't... Man, we ran into the issue in the last Let's Play where we had to build like multiple spines all over the base and that was a pain in the butt. So we're sticking with one here. We'll probably do something like this. We'll have like a walkway that'll be in the middle. What the heck, weird. And they'll kind of make like an X, and then we'll just start having conveyor walls all along the outside. So this will be a pretty spacious build. Like, it's not gonna be super cramped. We're gonna be able to really work in here quite a bit and organize things. Because when the spines are like just one wall apart like this, it is a pain in the butt trying to get lines in and out and just work with it. Whereas this kind of model will be much more user friendly. And it still gives us quite a bit to work with. So we have six, 12, 12 times four, 48? Yeah, 48 different slots to bring things up and down the base. Very cool. And the best part of all is we can put in curved walls on the sides. Ho 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 ho. Look at that. Oh. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Even better, they can be these powered walls. And they have these little power sticks on the side, so we can bring the power up our base too. Ho ho ho! Yes, this will be quite spicy. Quite spicy indeed. 
But I'm not gonna lie, this X not being like centered in this is kind of bugging me. And if we did try and center it, it'd look weird because we have this like little gap where we could run through and danger ourselves. And obviously we wouldn't like jump through here, but for realism, I kind of want something like that. I don't think these platforms are gonna do it for us. So perhaps the more factory thing has something better? I know there are glass foundations, which are pretty neat. Maybe we could try them? They kind of have this like plasticky look to them. It's not just me, right? Yeah. Perhaps the fence floors would be neat. Oh yes. These are pretty neat. And we can see through them. This is kind of spooky though, eh? Kind of really spooky. Especially considering how tall this spine project is going to get. <laughs> no railings either. Going to have to be brave, brother. And you know what? I think that's what we're going to use. We don't have many other, like, cool looking options. This one kind of has that plasticky look again. And yeah, th this is kind of just cool. Okay, and this is centered, but it, it's not, it's not there yet, you know what I mean? There's something wrong with this. Also, we have a bit of a problem without any platforms down here. The curved walls are going to have this empty gap around them. Which is perfect for bringing the power up and down. Oh my goodness, that is meant to be. Okay. So we're good there. And then for the middle, what if we just had these on the side? Uh, that's a negative Ghost Rider because there's that. Oof. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. What am I doing? We can just have a two by two walkway. Of course. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Oh wait, I did. Hashtag master designer kibs. Okay, very, very cool. And we're gonna wanna make this like its own little island too. So we'll get rid of all of this on the outside. And that's so when we have the belts going up, we can have a walkway traveling on the outskirts of what will be a tower here, and we can kind of monitor things. Okay, very, very cool, very, very cool. At the end of the day, when this thing is like a million miles tall, it's gonna look like the core of like the Death Star or something. It's gonna be such a crazy awesome looking design. Except, huh, it's kind of hovering here. How are we gonna have things go down? Well, obviously we bring the walls down, but I think it would also be cool to have a circular kind of pattern in the middle. Look at that, it matches the outside walls too, ho ho ho. Then we have a huge pillar underneath this, like anchoring it to the ground. Oh man, this is like the center of like a supervillain base. <gasps> and for every level, we can have this huge like big middle support pillar in the middle. And it's gonna be like the support for the whole thing. Ho 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 ho. Oh goodness gracious guys. Okay, and guys I got a little carried away with myself here and I made the next layer, and oh my gosh, this is going to be just the coolest thing ever. Like, n no sarcasm. Like, imagine this. Up to like there. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's... <laughs> I actually cannot wait. Oh, also, there are these really cool platform support things, and we can have them like underneath the walkways here, and it looks like they're actually supporting the walkways, and they can hold power. So I have like a ring of power along here too, so this whole thing can like power everything. <laughs> oh man, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. And then the inside is gonna look even better. Well, no, probably not, but like it's, it's still gonna look pretty cool. And speaking of unbelievable things, we didn't even say hi to Mio and Tuo today. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. You remember to leave a like? Of course you guys did. Ooh, and also, I guess it's about that time to check on the ma'am! Because for the last, oh gosh, couple days here, I've been researching hard drives, and I think we're done? Yes, we are. Hard drive completed, no new research available, we got them. So until we get tier seven, we have an extra 12 hard drives just sitting here. And we have every other alternate recipe available. Iron ingots, reinforced plates, everything, man. Oh man, this is gonna take like 20 years though to unlock everything. <laughs> Big oof. But we worry about that later. Because right now I still want to focus on the base. But you know, I've realized I don't think we can. 
because we have too many variables to deal with. Like, the train system mainly is our next huge project we need to get started on. And then also, the storage. Yeah, no, mainly trains. Mainly trains. And what tech do they need again? Pretty sure they need computers, right? Where are they at? Yep, computers, heavy modular frames, and motors. So motors we can get up and running pretty quick again. Computers, yeah, plastic memes. And we could probably get these going pretty quick too. And that means our number one priority is finishing off our steel factory over there so that we can at least start producing some heavy modular frames, get back onto motors, and then computers, eh, they're gonna take a little while. Oh yes, and I almost forgot, everybody's favorite meme, power. Uh, we kinda need to worry about power. Because since we're gonna be making oil refineries, monorails everywhere, or trains, we're gonna need a lot more. Now we do have quite a bit right now, like 4,000 capacity, but I wanna sit around 10,000 capacity, so that we can skip the whole fuel generator part of the game and go straight into nuclear. And we have a secret weapon in order to help us here. Renewable power. So this adds in Mark I water turbines. A floating turbine that produces 100 megawatts when placed in water. And the map is like 30% water. So, oh my goodness, this is going to be insane to unlock. And all we need is a little bit of plastic and some steel pipes. And luckily, your boy still has some oil, right? 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 Your boy. Right. Got some oil. And then, of course, we have a bunch of steel stuff stored. So let's research these bad boys and start spamming them pretty much everywhere. Well, hopefully. If they take extra plastic, we might have a problem. But I doubt it, right? Maybe? I don't know. Let's go and see. So power. Don't use plastic. My dude. Why? Well, I guess that leaves us no choice then. But we're gonna have to start refining oil. Sad day. A very sad day. So begin the memes. Alright, so set you to plastic. Hook you up to the grid. And we'll just make a little bit of plastic solely for the purpose of making water turbines. Well, got a bit of plastic here and now we're gonna start spamming them down. So, I have a bit of a secret to tell you. I've tried to avoid this for a very long time. But, I've kind of been making a mess. Whoa. Son, hello, good morning. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of been making a mess. So you know how we have about 4,000 megawatts? Well, before we had about 1,800. Before a live stream. And on this live stream, I made something horrible. Something that should never have been created. A terrible place I just call the power dumpster fire. So we're just above our base right now on this little plateau, and there are three pure coal nodes. So in order to kind of skip over the fuel power phase of the game, we're spamming this entire biome with coal generators. And it's going to be horrific. Like, this is the spaghetti when I'm just getting started. And it's only going to get worse. So much worse. And since this place is already ruined, we're gonna ruin it even more by putting down these water things, because they're big, they're bulky, and they look kind of meh. Yeah, kind of meh. Why do you not run, my friend? Not connected? Oh wait, I was thinking it wasn't deep enough. No, the probably what's going on is it just needs a power connected, like that. Oh yeah, there we go. And that's our cool 100 megawatts. Easy. And these things are really cheap, like, it didn't take us very long to gather up this much plastic, and man, we can spam these things everywhere. Pretty much 1,400 extra megawatts in the span of like two seconds. And honestly, I think we could probably get about 30,000 megawatts out of these lakes here. Considering we can make rows like this, oh my goodness, yeah. This will absolutely solve our power problems for the foreseeable future. Which means we can continue to focus on our main base. Anyway though, that's gonna be all here for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>